welcome everyone. Uh, my talk is going to be on high-level uh, semantic description for motion pictures, and this is a uh, mini lit review as requested. This is part one, which is an introduction. I've had to separate the work out between introductory remarks that I'll make today versus dealing with some of the more technical information uh, in part two. I'm not going to burden you with. Okay. Okay. All right, so uh, just to situate the work that I'm doing in, in the lit review. Uh, so films have provided what I think are an en enduring source of reflection on the human condition and, and give, uh, give us views across time, place, cultures, ideas. I, I think they're important, hopefully some or many of you agree they're also important. And as our, part of our cultural heritage, access to them, which has traditionally taken place over the years since they originated in the 1890s, has been available on a limited basis. In fact, until the 1970s, exhibition was pretty much limited to uh, release in movie theaters, let's say, across the country, eventually to the rest of the world, which was um, uh, followed up by much more limited available availability, usually in the form of 16 millimeter prints in libraries and archives and other resource areas where scholars, intellectuals, film buffs, whoever wanted to go see them, had to have a pretty good reason. and. In general, uh, you know, might have to travel several hundred miles to go look at a film or, or screen a film or do a shot by shot analysis in depth and so forth. Uh, video cassettes came along in the 1970s, which was a great thing because it began to popularize films beyond that initial release point. And then eventually, digitization and DVDs came in. Um, now we're getting probably pretty close to on-demand streaming where you'll be able to just choose a film from some large collection and download it to your TV or your uh, computer that might be connected to your TV and so forth. Um, and out on the internet, um, it, it, it may appear to a lot of people that Films are well cataloged. Catalog. There's lots of databases, IMDb, and so forth, Netflix, Rock Tomatoes. You can go to a lot of sites, find out an awful lot of information about films. And if you go to bibliographic catalogs or you go to uh, libraries and, 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 and archives, you will find a certain amount of um, organization of the information and subject access, but basically, it's my opinion, that uh, systems provide very limited intellectual use uh, and that the uses that we do find are limited to commercial purposes and the very limiting categorical schemes that have been basically grandfathered in from anywhere from 100 down to, say, 50 or 20 years ago. Okay. So. All right, so um, I've essentially uh, decided that I would try to set up a project so that I could study and attack some of the various problems that I think are currently involved uh, with moving us from where we are on, in terms of web systems to a full exploratory knowledge base or film knowledge system. Uh, so uh, the project's in the conceptual stage essentially and it's being established a as a framework for that. Um, some of the goals that you see in here may seem a little bit idealistic. Uh, they are. Uh, and of course, idealistic goals uh, do well to, in my opinion, to inform research and design and development projects. Okay, now um, I put together uh, a very basic, very preliminary, simple diagram of what might be an exploratory web system. It's similar to other 
uh, web systems. And the circled red area are the areas that I'm currently focused on in my research. Uh, to define some terms, because I'm high-level semantic description, I don't know what exactly is that. Um, in general, uh, as they say up there, high-level focuses more on, on what the film is really about, or what it's about, and why, uh, how and why it was made. Um, so we're looking at this in contrast to facts and figures, release dates, country of origin, information like that. That's normally available, genre, simple genre information and so forth. Uh, for semantics, uh, we're just talking about things relating to meaning, to meanings, meaning of things. Uh, and uh, in the case of the literature review, which we'll, I'll come to in a minute, uh, descriptions were typically found in different types of metadata and glossaries, subject headings, the CRI, things of that nature. Okay. So my research question, as succinctly as I could put it today, uh, is uh, can the high-level semantic descriptions of motion pictures that are found in existing systems serve the exploratory needs of a film discourse community? And this is, again, somewhat general, but if we look at the exploratory needs of the film discourse community, which are kind of a com com composite of the types of discussion that go on, the types of analysis that go on in publications and film studies, uh, online uh, blogging and wikis and other uh, sources of information, uh, you, you see you know, a lot of different aspects and a lot of different dimensions of film and things that relate to film, they come into play. These things are talked about all the time. And uh, so it's not just popular facts and figures and celebrity worship and, you know, movie trivia type stuff. There are, you know, a goodly number of people who are thinking a little bit more about film and maybe they think uh, enjoying films on a deeper level. Uh, this would include film sc scholars and uh, critics and film buffs of all types. So, you know, if you put all this together, you see a somewhat complex and I think a broad and, and deep set of attributes that need to be dealt with. Okay. Uh, so, it's kind of hard to generalize what uh, the categorical systems that we might find in, in public and private resources are. Uh, but for 90 years, uh, subject description, for the most part, consisted of broad subject headings, uh, synopses, and then in the 80s, uh, genre and form were brought in a little bit more formally into some of these categorical systems. Um, and since then, computerization, of course, has um, given somewhat of a green light to multiple subject, using multiple subject headings. And uh, still, the jump hasn't really fully been made to the kinds of full descriptions in the aspects that I, I showed on the earlier slide that the film community is concerned with when they describe films. Okay, so the literature review. <laughs> Uh, um, I don't know, I just like this diagram, but I like diagrams, but uh, in the center is the high-level semantic description for motion pictures, and if you read around some of the other circles, uh, there are some areas that uh, I felt might be useful to look at, because in fact, um, the related work is where most of the information that exists uh, that's going to be useful and that's going to inform some of my research uh, is going to be found. Okay, so just to give a quick uh, over, uh, summary, essentially, uh, beyond a few good studies, uh, the research largely remains to be done. Uh, particularly analytical studies were scant. Um, and, that, and by that I mean those focused directly 
uh, on semantic descriptions. Um, I'll probably look a little bit more closely at this information down here in, in, in part two of the literature review, which will be written, and you'll have to, of course, request that. Hi. Ah, so, some highlights, uh, briefly. Um, Sarah Shatford, 1986, uh, published an article analyzing the subject of a picture, and I, I guess this is as close as you come to a seminal work in, in this area. And uh, I looked at the article uh, a few times during the course of uh, my overall lit review, kept going back to it, and back to it, and back to it, and back to it. Um, it, it, it builds upon uh, Pinofsky's um, level of meaning and, and uh, Ranganathan, which many of you are familiar with, his colon classification, faceted analysis approach. Uh, and more importantly, I felt that she really went on to deal with some of the kind of gotchas of subject indexing, things that people have a problem with or have traditionally. Um, she doesn't necessarily solve all these problems. She refers to uh, what she feels are good treatments of them prior to 1986 in this case. Um, but since then, um, it's really opened the door for a lot of further research. And um, this article has a, had a lot of influence for the past 20 years, I'll put it that way, in this field generally and specifically in the area that I'm most interested in. Um, two other, these are books that were written. Uh, uh, Lucien Maillet, that's how she pronounces her name, uh, wrote, uh, and by the way, she holds five degrees. <laughs> she has an MA, an MS, and an MBA, as well as a BA and a, a doctor in uh, collaborative information science. Um, uh, she said that she had a, quote, mild professional curiosity about the area of subject control film and video, and she went on to do her doctoral research and write this book. It really pretty well covers the territory from the catalog inside, uh, or at least it gave me what I needed to see. Um, and then uh, the other book down here, which is really a completely different ball of wax, uh, is a, somewhat of a, a contrary approach to indexing multimedia and creative works. Um, it, it suggests that we're doing it wrong and that we need to do it in a, a little bit, well, in a lot different way. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll quote for their, uh, from their, what they said about why they wrote the book. Because we believe that existing approaches to multimedia retrieval and multimedia indexing specifically are limited because they do not generally engage with questions about the meanings of documents. Am I close? It's looking at that. Okay, well, I'm almost. Um, so, I have a few suggestions for future work. Uh, I guess you could look at this as an agenda for me for now. Um, uh, some of the work, you know, is to collect, uh, to identify and collect language and concepts, and then to distinguish some of the characteristics of the descriptions found there with other types of imaginative and creative works. And hopefully, certainly, I'd like to see a test bed of some sort for uh, further analysis and testing. And as we say in the movie biz, soon, soon uh, part two and, and the literature, in which again, uh, I hope to get into some of the more, some of the more uh, technical aspects. So thanks for listening. Um, I hope somebody here is a little more interested in this. I don't know. Uh, anyway, if you have any questions, I'm available and I'm glad to discuss any time. I guess I'm running time now. Later. Yeah, a minute or two for questions. That was about, that was 14 minutes. No, we kept looking at it. I was going to give you the two-minute thing. Oh, you, you, is that you, how you're doing this? Well, I, I didn't tell you all that. And, and, uh, <laughs> but, uh,
Well, I have a quick question. Okay. Uh, it's probably not quick. Okay, so that MPEG-7 that was just right there, I'm not familiar with it. Is that um, a format that includes yeah. data in it? Yeah. For M videos? Yeah, MPEG-7. Uh, MPEG is Motion Picture Experts Group. Um, MPEG-7 uh, is was in, in, intended to uh, create these descriptive screen, schemes um, and what they call semantic descriptors, which would get um, enable you from a metadata standpoint to start, you know, to have containers for you to put information about films, videos, multimedia.